Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Sire podcast. Today, completely different, no guest, only a little bit of Bitcoin topics, because today I want to show you all the processes, all the studio, behind the scenes, what I do, how I do it, and yeah, just take you a little bit uh, behind the usual camera setup. Perfect, then uh, let's get into the studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit squeaky. Uh, it's actually from Vienna. It's a really uh, um, popular thing in Vienna, having an Altbau Wohnung. I have no clue what, what this is in English. It's like an old building. Yeah, it's basically exactly that. It's an old building. So let's come in, uh, in the studio. And the first thing, like usually, it looks exactly like that. Uh, and it's not as fancy with, without the lights, without uh, everything turned on. Uh, but uh, this is how it usually looks. And you can see here, uh, I have my CapCut open, I have my Opus Clips, which is really important, open. And uh, yeah, there are my lights, everything uh, is there. But let's switch it on so it actually looks like when I, was, uh, I would record. The first thing that I usually do is turning off the main light, the, the usual light that I use uh, when I shoot stuff. Then turning this light on, uh, turning this light on, turning the camera on, uh, turning my boombox on <laughs> because my PC does not have nice speakers. And then I have my background light, so it looks also good. And that's it. Like that's all, uh, all of my studio uh, lightings. I use two soft boxes and not soft boxes. I don't even know how this is called. <laughs> this is uh, just an LED uh, panel. Uh, and yeah, the most important stuff uh, is uh, the background light and for me the, the microphone, so I can speak nicely. I really like that I could put it here. Uh, so I can, when I get in the chair, I can nicely talk with my uh, guests and it's uh, easy setup. Like I work every day here uh, and recording is just like, here's the camera um, and maybe uh, you can come here and, and film it. What I usually do uh, is putting because there is my camera so when I look like that I directly look in the camera which is really difficult for me when the guest is there because I want to uh, of course look at the guest and want to give him the feeling that I look at the guest so what I do is just make this smaller really small and put it here and here would be the guest. So when I sit and speak, then I actually look at the guest uh, and it's not that far off of the camera. So he actually has the feeling that I look at him. And as my philosophy is always being completely transparent, uh, I just was like, let's reveal the whole process. How do I invite the guests? How does things come together? Uh, and also uh, how how, how is everything coming together in a way where uh, I have no contact with a guest till I have a full episode and I'm in contact with the guest and then I'm publishing everything to this point. Uh, because what you have to know is um, when I record with a guest, I usually don't have any contact with him before. Like I have maybe I, I talked with him on the phone. This is really rare, honestly. Um, maybe I knew him before already. This is even rarer. Uh, and most of the guests that are on my podcast, I texted with them once or twice, or me maybe three times or four times, uh, because of the date, of the time. Uh, and maybe we discussed some topics, uh, but sometimes we don't even discuss topics. I just invite them. They're like, yeah, yeah let's go. And I prepare the topics uh, and except like maybe 
two, three, four guests, nobody even wants questions or topics from me. They're just like, oh, let's go into the, the conversation. And I just steer the conversation where uh, I thought, I think the conversation needs to be. Uh, and how I start is, I start always off with uh, inviting them. So how do I select my guests? It's pretty easy. When I see someone in the replies uh, in, on Twitter, but also on YouTube, and I invited someone from my YouTube comments because he always gives really interesting uh, comments uh, and really interesting feedbacks and inputs. And I was like, let's, let's invite him uh, on, on, on the show, on the podcast. And I also do this on, on Twitter if there's some interesting reply. Uh, if there's something interesting that I see on my feed and I'm like, uh, I'm just writing back, hey, I, I love what you said here, I love your profile, I love whatever. Uh, and do you want to come on the show? Do you want to join me for an episode? Uh, and that's basically the starting point. And then I write them a personal message. <clears throat> and to my surprise, uh, most of... Hmm? Uh, and then I send the personal message and this is my biggest surprise. Like when I started the podcast, I was like, who even wants to talk with me? Like I was, I'm, I'm, I still am, um, no, how should I say it? Who even wants to talk with me? Like who wants to come on the podcast of a non-existing podcast? Like in December, I had zero viewers, zero uh, listeners. Uh, now I have some, now people want to come on the show, now it's a little bit more understandable. But even in the starting, there was no show, there was n no experience from my side. I just started it and people still said just yes. Like 9 out of 10 people said, oh yeah, let's do it, uh, I, I, I want to come on to your show. There are some people that re rejected, but they always said like, oh, I want to stay anonymous or stay this and that. Um, and even that I, I totally understand and I even put them on the show. Uh, but in the end, nine out of 10 people say yes. And this is fascinating for me because I come from that, uh, that feared world, from that sales world where uh, one out of 10 people say yes. Uh, and here in, in Bitcoin, you just ask them and nine out of uh, 10 people say uh, yes, which is uh, really cool and fascinating. Uh, I love how how amazing this uh, community is. The next step, uh, I try to automize and automate everything as good as I can, which is I send them a link where they can select a date and time which fits them well, like the, it fits uh, perfect for them. And then they automatically get an email with all the details with everything that's going on. In that way, my whole process is really easy. I, I just put it out there, uh, the, the link, and they can sa uh, sign up themselves, uh, and then they get everything uh, what they want to want to have. Uh, in that way, I don't have to write back and forth with the different time zones, with the different uh, timings and his schedules. Uh, it, it would be without the, those Calendly, uh, Google Calendar features that are out there, I probably would need, I, I probably could not do <laughs> once, once a day a podcast because it's just not possible uh, at this point. But uh, with those tools, with all those AI tools that I use, with all those automation tools that I use, it's quite possible. I need like five, six hours per episode. And then the, the next step of the process, uh, when once he, once we made the contact, once we uh, set up a date and a time, uh, then we usually s set up some topics. I, I, I always ask them, oh, what do you want to talk about? Is there anything specific that you're passionate about? Is there anything I should know about you? Should, uh, should I listen to any podcasts or should I read any articles about you? So I get to know the guests uh, better. Uh, and then we directly jump to like one, two hours before the podcast. Uh, and this is the time where I research like half an hour at least before the podcast I try to research but usually I start like one hour before the podcast to research uh, with some bigger guests with some uh, because I invite people that have uh, not a lot of online presence and I invite people that have a lot of online presence so when there's not a lot of online presence 
you can you cannot prepare that much so you just go into the conversation and try to figure out what uh, you can say and, and what's what's good to say with bigger guests uh, there's a lot of things going on there are a lot of questions you could ask and i try to figure out what are the best questions uh, to ask him what are the best things uh, for for the viewers to to see from the guest so i get in there we talk sometimes two three minutes before the podcast sometimes half an hour before we start the podcast uh, it depends on on how much uh, it it feels natural to talk with the guest uh, some also have time limits so they're like hey i have to get off in one hour uh, and and we we uh, just directly jump in without small talk and this is also something my length of the video sometimes differs a lot like sometimes they are like 40 minutes uh, podcast sometimes it's like one and a half hours sometimes it's over two hours and this also depends on the guest like it also depends of course on the topics and how interesting the conversation is uh, but often often times it just depends on the guest because he only has one hour time uh, or he wants to speak a lot and I, then we go for like the two hour mark i rarely rarely edit anything out so if there is uh, any mistakes happening for example the lights fall off of the guest side the internet connection was uh, uh, falling off for like a few minutes or something like that then i cut that part out but uh, the conversations are pretty rare and just and not rare uh, the conversations are pretty raw and i just put them out there the only thing that's happening and i, I will talk about the post-production and the publishing process afterwards but it's maybe interesting to know here the only thing that is happening is i put out the small breaks with an ai tool like when there's a one or two second or three second silence AI tool just sees that and cuts it out all the time. Now uh, to the editing process. First of all, I have no clue about editing. <laughs> there, are, there are way better people in editing and this is a part that um, is probably the first part that I'm looking forward to outsource. I still don't feel um, comfortable doing that uh, step because I need uh, two I need to be comfortable with two things. I need to be comfortable financially on this whole thing. Uh, and I need to be really comfortable uh, with knowing exactly what I want with uh, an editor. And both things I still have to figure out. But this being said, uh, my process looks pretty, pretty easy. I uh, put the whole thing that I have from Riverside uh, I produce clips with AI tools. Uh, Riverside has some, Opus Clips has some, there are like a lot of different tools out there you, that you can use to produce clips. Uh, when you use Riverside, you, you basically can just uh, directly use Riverside. And from those clips, I get ideas from how, what parts are most interesting. So I get usually like a list of 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 clips from the podcast and I look through all of them uh, and AI suggests them to me. And from those 40 clips, I take like the five most interesting clips or 10 most interesting clips. And I see, can I put those clips into the trailer in front of the episode? Or can I put those clips in a short form content that I put out on YouTube shorts, on all the platforms, on Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically the process of having this podcast distributed uh, 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 across platforms and building the trail in front of it. Then editing the, the tra trail is not really interesting. I just use CapCut, I cut it out, I put some transitions on there, I put some effects on there. It's, 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 it's nothing uh, uh, that interesting. Uh, at least for me, uh, but maybe that's uh, just uh, why I want to <laughs> outsource it uh, to, to, to someone who's actually really good in, in editing. For the last part of this video, I want to address a topic that is um, quite difficult still for me because when you have so many guests on and you have every day a different guest on and you invite them really quickly, because when I see an interesting topic and I see an interesting reply on my feed and I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, let's, uh, 
let's take this. Uh, let's uh, let's take a conversation. Uh, let's make a conversation out of this. I just like someone uh, replies to my uh, tweet, and I see like, oh, it's an interesting comment. Uh, I want to discuss that on a top on a podcast. I quickly check the profile. Is he a Bitcoiner? Uh, then yeah, let's get on a call and let's set everything up like as I just explained. And there's one point in the deep research before the recording where I research really deeply or what websites does he link to, uh, what does he say, what does he do, uh, and what uh, everything that I can see, see. And there are some guests where I'm like, no, that's, uh, that's, that's not a good, good candidate. He is promoting stuff that I don't want to be promoted. Uh, he's making some some scams, maybe even he's maybe involved in some uh, uh, altcoin scam, and then I don't want to have him on the podcast. Um, and this is the part where it gets hard to choose what guest is 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 worth being on the podcast because I believe really that every pleb, every bitcoiner deserves a stage, and I try to give every Bitcoin and pleb with my podcast exactly this stage. So I don't require you to have a massive following, um, but to a certain extent, I owe it to the viewer, I owe it to the listener that the guest is interesting and the guest is uh, not a scammer. So that's the balance I have to make. And there will be some guests that I invite and then I even record maybe with them that I have to say no we cannot publish this or we, we cannot do that. Till now it did not happen that I had to um, cancel a recording afterwards but I think it's just a matter of time till this actually happens um, but I had to cancel the recording after we are already set a date because I saw that there was something shady going on there was something uh, not go going on and this is I'm also trying to uh, just not promote scams at this point. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's the main thing. I want to have interesting conversations with Bitcoiners uh, about Bitcoin freedom and everything that uh, I talk on the podcast. I don't want anyone promoting their scams to my uh, to, to the Bitcoin audience. With that being said, uh, it was a different one. It was a different episode. It was also way shorter. I don't know how, how long it will end up, but probably it will be a quick and, and short episode. Uh, I will experiment in the future with different forms of content around the podcast and Bitcoin. I will make a usual YouTube talking head videos where I talk like 10, 15, 20, 25, maybe in 30 minutes about one specific topic and dive deep. I also want to make how-to videos uh, about setting up a node, setting up multisig, stuff like that, uh, because uh, I want to explore them myself and making a how-to video about that forces me to actually learn about that stuff really deeply. Uh, and then I also want to make reaction videos to videos I see online. I might even do a reaction video to podcasts I went on. So for example, when I, um, as a speaker or as a guest on a different podcast, uh, I, I might uh, react to that what I said there so get, to give a little bit more insights uh, to my thinking and to, to the guests podcasts uh, and, and this is basically what I will do in the next uh, couple of months uh, uh, developing on top of the podcast itself more uh, types of content I really appreciate uh, you being here thank you for watching and yeah as always I'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye